linked genes are just two genes or two traits that are found on one chromosome. And typically, we're going to talk about linked genes on the X chromosome, and we call those sex-linked genes. Remember, both males and females have an X chromosome. The female has two Xs, the male has an X and a Y. So as a result, if we're talking about sex-linked traits, the male cannot be heterozygous, right? He only has one X, and a heterozygote is going to have two of the different alleles. So for a male with the Y, we don't put anything on the Y. We're just tracking a trait that occurs on the X chromosome solely. So when we write our pennant squares for sex-linked traits, we write them a little bit differently. We need to take into account the sex of the individual, the male or the female, because we know that the male only has one X. And if we don't include the Y, it's going to result in incorrect ratios and incorrect offspring. Um, therefore, the way we, we write it is we use superscripts. So here's an example, and I'll write one on the board as well. We could have a female that's heterozygous. So I make sure that I make my two X's indicating that she's female. And then I make my alleles as superscripts, similar to the blood typing example. So this female would be heterozygous, okay? Or you can have um, the male, for example, cannot be heterozygous, so he could either have a big B, or we could have a male that is recessive, X, little b, Y, okay? So these are the options for the males versus the females. There are, um, since the male cannot be heterozygous, Sex-linked traits occur much more frequently in males versus females because the male, if he has the recessive trait, he has to show it. So some very common sex-linked traits in humans, um, one is colorblindness, which is a recessive trait, and this is a panel that you would see in a colorblindness book that um, doctors would use to determine if an individual was colorblind or not. Um, so if you were colorblind, you wouldn't be able to see the number that's in the box there. Colorblindness is more frequent in males than females because it is a sex-linked recessive trait. Um, the other one, sorry, is hemophilia, which is another sex-linked recessive trait. It's a blood clotting disorder where your blood doesn't clot correctly. Um, however, if you are a heterozygous female, you have enough normal blood cells that your blood clots normally. Let's go through a couple examples of sex-linked pundit squares because you will have to do these on your homework. So here's a colorblindness example. Colorblindness is a sex-linked recessive trait. Note that I'm telling you immediately in the pundit square writing that it is sex-linked. So automatically you have to think I need to use X's and Y's. I can't just use big B and little b. Um, a man and a woman with normal vision have a colorblind son. So let's figure out what we know. We know that, let's use B for colorblind. So we know that if they have a big B, they have normal vision. If they have a little B, they're going to be colorblind. Okay? And we know we have a man and a woman and they have a son. So I'm going to make X's and Y's. Here's my man, here's my woman, and here's the son. And it says that the man and the woman have normal vision and the sun is colorblind. So the sun has to have a little b. I'm not going to put anything on the y because this trait is not carried on the y, it's on the x. I also know the man and the woman have normal vision, so they have to have a big b. Right? The dad has a big b, nothing on the y. The woman has a big b as well. So let's look at this. Um, we need to figure out if this woman is, she could be homozygous dominant and have another big B, or she could be heterozygous and have a little b. So we can figure that out based on the son. To make a son, what does the dad have to give? He has to give the Y. So this Y has to come from the dad in order to create a male offspring. Therefore, where does this X little b have to come from? It must come from the mother. So we know that this mom is heterozygous. She has this trait, or she carries it, even though she doesn't display it. So now we've figured out the genotype of all of the individuals. Okay. The next question that it's asking us is, what is the chance 
that they will have another child who is colorblind. In order to figure that out, we're going to make our Punnett square. When I make my Punnett square, I need to bring my X's and my Y's in addition to my B's. I'm still not going to put anything on the Y. Okay, so here's my mom who's heterozygous, here's my dad who has normal vision, and in the boxes as well, I'm going to put my X's and my Y's, so I'm going to be able to determine if the offspring is male or female, in addition to if they are colorblind or not. So the only individual, the only offspring potentially that's going to be colorblind is this boy down here, so we would say that there is a 25% chance of this couple having another child that is colorblind. Let's do one more example. Duquesne muscular dystrophy is caused by a sex-linked recessive allele, little d. A normal woman whose father suffered from Duquesne muscular dystrophy marries a man who also suffers from the condition. What is the chance that the couple will have a son who has muscular dystrophy? So, let us start off by writing what we know. And then we'll write who the people are as well that we're looking at. We're looking at muscular dystrophy. Um, and we know that a big D, they are normal. And a little D, they have muscular dystrophy. Okay, they're affected. So we have a mom, we have a dad, we have her dad. I'll put him over here. Um, and then we have, that's all we have, right? So we need to make our X's and our Y's because again we said that this is a sex link trait. And we know the mom is normal normal woman, so she's going to have a big D, who, and her husband suffers from it, so he's going to have a little D. He's going to have the Duquesne muscular dystrophy. We also know that the woman's father suffered from it, so he has a little D. We can use that information. He, the dad's not going to be involved in the Punnett square at all, but we can use that information and figure out that this female has to be heterozygous, right? Because the dad didn't give her the Y, if he did, she'd be female. He had to give her this little D, so we know the genotype of the woman. Okay? It says, what's the chance the couple will have a son who has muscular dystrophy? In order to figure that out, we're going to make a Punnett square. And again, we want to make sure that we include the X's and the Y's. In this case, the dad has the trait. The mom is heterozygous. So I'm going to bring my X's and my Y's. So we actually have the chance of one of the daughters having it as well. The question didn't ask us about that. It asked us about the son. So there's a 25% chance that they would have a son that has muscular dystrophy. I hope this helps you as you work through your homeworks and all of the sex-linked equations.